This is a video reply to the Cinephiles Back to the Future review episode. Uh, if you don't know what the Cinephiles is, check in the description down below and there's a link to their channel. It's my favourite film review show and they are they're awesome and they deserve to be much much bigger on YouTube. So go and check them out, subscribe to them, they've just got so many fantastic videos. Um, so the, the new episode that they uploaded was on the Back to, Back to the Future franchise and I found it really interesting. I thought the show was kind of funny in itself, you know, because like Edwin was like, you know, unfortunately on uh, painkillers for a, a back problem and Mike wasn't that interested in the Back to the Future franchise and then there was that couch with, with uh, uh, Eric, Jeff and Mike sitting on it. It was just, I don't know. I just found the show uh, amusing, although I always find it's always uh, a good banter, it's always a good laugh. Um, but it was, you know, kind of, it was funny and um, I think, you know, sometimes you guys get a bit heated, but, you know, I think, you you know, with each other, which is one of the reasons I watch the show at times, but, uh, you know, there was a really good atmosphere between all of you uh, during the... the uh, the show and uh, a lot of great points just made about Back to the Future. Uh, let's say Back to the Future franchise, I think, uh, you know, as a kid I just loved it, especially the first film. Uh, it actually had a big impact on me because it was the film that made me want to go and play the guitar and uh, that sort of shaped a lot of my life, so um, it's always sort of meant a lot to me. I was in interested to uh, listen to you know, Mike said that he thought it was decent and it sort of achieved what it set out to do and and that was it really and uh, I thought he would have loved that film but um, you know, I think it's a classic, I agree with like, you know, I think uh, Edwin was saying that as well, he, th he thought it was a classic and um, mentioning the fact that Eric Stoltz was uh, originally cast as Martin McFly and then they brought in Michael J. Fox. I'm sure I read somewhere that they'd actually filmed for like six weeks with Eric Stoltz, so that's like a lot. They must have filmed a lot of uh, of the movie. So I think some of the footage recently was released. Uh, it would be interesting to see all of it. I mean, I always wondered if they actually had enough to cobble something together, like an alternate version of Back to the Future. It would be really interesting to see. Um, so... Uh, let's say, I agree back with Edwin, Back to the Future is a, a, a classic film. Um, I don't think there's really much I can add to what a lot of people have said about the the first film, you know, it's just uh, it's, it's just phenomenal. Um, now, Back to the Future 2, I was quite surprised by a lot of you because, you know, you, you criticised it quite heavily and I was surprised because, you know, I quite like Back to the Future 2, I think, I think it was Eric that was uh, it was a couple of days that I watched the uh, the show, guys. So um, I've not had a chance to do a, a, a reply video. So uh, just if I'm a bit sketchy on some of the details, but the the I think it was Eric that said that the second film was uh, like the idea of going back to 1955 and all that was not really it was executed quite poorly. And um, I don't know. I I thought it was for what it was. I thought it was done quite well. I thought the idea of in, in, intercutting, you know, Marty then with himself in the previous film, and you're getting to see those, you know, scenes again, which for a lot of people in the 1980s were you know iconic scenes. I thought that was sort of well done. There's a little bit of some dodgy green screen work going on, but um, I thought it was more or less well done. I think. Uh, the second film, I think, jumps around a little bit too much. You know, it goes into the fu future and then goes to uh, back to nineteen eighty five, and uh, I, f I found the, the alternate nineteen eighty five really interesting. Uh, you know, Biff is just owns the second film, um, and then they go back to to nineteen fifty five again, and I just in in general, I I. I I enjoyed the second one. I think it's got problems. I think Jeff said that there was like there was so much product placement in the second film. And I think there was, but there was some in the first film as well. And I think I don't know if it was them being cynical. I think maybe they just thought it was like a charming thing they did in the first film, where they showed you 
how things, products that you still use in, in, in 1985 when the first film came out, that they were around in 1955 and how they looked and things like that. And there was a charm to that. I think they just tried to up that. And yeah, there was just too much, you know, Nike uh, and Pepsi and just everywhere there was product placement. It did feel a little, it was, it was too much of it. So I agreed with Jeff on that. Um, I think, let's say, it did jump around too much. I think, uh, I think it was Ed that said that it had a too much of a downbeat ending that jarred with the rest of the series. And I don't know. I I, I think the one of the most heroic moments in the entire franchise is when you know the guy delivering the letter to Marty in the end says, you know, do you need help? And Marty says, there's only one man who can help me, and it cuts to Doc Brown up in the clock tower. I thought that was sort of. Uh, quite a sort of heroic moment, you know, and uh, I enjoyed that. But I think the biggest problem with Back to the Future Part 2 is actually in the performances. I think <clears throat> that there are a few lines that really catch you off guard. They, they, they jar with the rest of the film. Um, uh, like when Marty says, Doc, we're going to have to, you're not going to believe this, we're going to have to go back to 1955. And Doc Brown goes, I don't believe it, you know, or whatever. That was a terrible impersonation. Um... It, it, the perform the, some of the deliveries uh, sort of some of the lines just they just seemed off to me um, and not in line with the characters from the first film so but I, I do put that down to the fact that Robert Zemeckis said that he felt if he'd been given a couple of extra months he, you know while editing you know Back to the Future 2 he sort of cobbled together because he was making Back to the Future 3 at the, at the same time and um, he wishes he could could have had a bit more time. I, th I think he's probably used some takes that maybe he shouldn't have used and there's probably some cuts in the film he shouldn't have used. And it'd be interesting if he went back and gave us an alternate version of it. Anyway, so on to the third film. Um, the third film I, uh, I, I like. I think it's better than the second one. Um, I think it should... I, th I think the third one was what the, the series should originally have been, where... After the first film, you know, in the second film it should have been a different time, and in the third film it should have been a different time, and and you know each film should have been in just a completely different environment, just seeing those characters adapt to that environment. Um, so I quite liked in the third one the fact that they went to the old west, and uh, I think you know there's some great set pieces and uh, the fact that it, I I know it. it comes off as a kind of second rate western in a lot of ways and maybe the parody of the western is a little bit too on the nose, it's too in your face, it's not subtle enough but um, there, there, uh, there are little things in it, you know, little nice touches like um, when uh, Marty first mentions Clint Eastwood 1955, he's walking past a poster and I think it's the cre uh, Return of the Creature from the Black Lagoon or something like that, the, the Clint Eastwood's first film. Um, and no, that was a nice touch, but I liked the third one. I did like it. Uh, I think it sort of wound up the, the the series nicely. And you know, it's a decent trilogy. The first film's classic. The other two aren't as strong, but they're still worth a watch. And there's some good moments in there. But you know, there are so many trilogies that you watch: The Matrix, Pirates of the Caribbean, the you know, more modern trilogies that tried to do the same thing that Back to the Future did, where they made the second and third films at the same time. Um, which is an interesting point. I think Mike was it Mike that said that that was the first time that happened, and uh, there was an example. I can't remember what example he gave, but I'm sure Superman and Superman Two were made together at the same time, and then they fired Richard Donner, Donner and brought in. Uh, what was his name? Was it Richard Lester? Was that the name of the director that replaced him? Um, so, uh, yeah, I, th I think they did that with Superman and Superman 2. I think they were filmed back to back. Uh, so I think it had been going on before then, but you, you see these other trilogies where it doesn't work, really. So, it's nice to see something where the quality doesn't drop hugely. I mean, the second and third films are enjoyable. Um, prattling on now so I'm going to go but um, great review show as normal guys and uh, really looking forward to seeing what uh, what future videos you are going to do and uh, that's about it so remember uh, my subscribers check out the Cinefiles 
down below and uh, subscribe to them. And that's about it. So I'll see.